What's up there aliens, welcome back to another video on Itakwar. Flutter just released a new stable version, this time 3.19, with so many improvements and new features. So if you're new here and want to become an in-demand Flutter developer in this fast paced world of technology, check out the 7 weeks of Flutter and Firebase developer bootcamp on Itakwar. So according to our friendly Kevin Kishom, Flutter 3.19 brings a new Dart SDK for Gemini, a widget enabling developers to add fine-grained control to widget animations, a rendering boost with updates to Impeller, tooling to help implement deep links, Windows ARM64 support, and much more. In this video, we will be exploring some bold features, and if you want to get familiar with all the small and large changes and features, check out the Kevin's official blog post from the link in the video description. So first thing that Flutter 3.19 brings is the Google AI Dart SDK and it's currently in beta version. This enables you to build generative AI features into your Dart or Flutter app powered by Gemini, Google's latest family of AI models. You can utilize this Google Generative AI package in the pub dev to integrate chatbot functionality in your Flutter app. The approach is very simple. Using that package, a simple string prompt and provide it to the inbuilt generate content method. And there you go. In your Flutter app, you can take this prompt from the text field and after it's been submitted, call the generate content method and display the generated content as AI response to build your own text generating chatbot. Next. There are some framework improvements where they improved scrollings in Flutter. You can now configure the default scroll behavior with the multi-touch drag strategy dot latest pointer to get the number of fingers agnostic scrolling behavior. Next, there were some bugs in Flutter widgets such as single child scroll view and reorderable list. They were causing unexpected behavior and were causing crashes. Now they are fixed by Flutter team. Next. Two-dimensional scrolling foundation in Flutter is now even more improved as compared to the past stable releases. Next, Flutter has a new animation style widget that allows users to override the default animation behavior in widgets, such as material app, expansion tile, and pop-up menu button providing developers with the ability to override animation curves and durations. Next. A new style form static utility method added to the segmented button widget just like the ones provided by the other button types. This method enables quickly creating a segmented button's button style that can be shared with other segmented buttons or used to configure the app's segmented button theme. Next, a new adapted switch has been added and feels native on macOS and iOS and has a material design look and feel elsewhere. It does not depend on the cappuccino libraries so its API is exactly the same on all the platforms. Next. There are some improvements on Flutter Engine for Android, which is Vulkan Impeller and other performance improvements. You can check that out here on the official blog of Kevin Kishol. Next, a deep linking validator has been added in Flutter 3.19 for Android. Deep linking is when you're browsing a website on your phone and you click a link that takes you directly to the specific page in a mobile. That's deep linking. But sometimes setting up deep linking can be tricky and frustrating. This is where the new deep linking validator comes in. It's like helpful assistant that checks if your deep linking setup is working correctly, no more guessings or struggling. The current version focuses on Android specifically and it basically looks at the file called assetslinks.json. This file tells the system how your app handles deep link. Next, the default share button on text fields and views are previously missing from Android, but now it's added in this release as a part of the ongoing effort to ensure all the default context menu buttons are available on each platform. Next, if you like to integrate some extra functionality in your Flutter apps through Flutter interoperability, Flutter 3.19 adds native assets features. Think of it as bridge between languages. It allows you to include native libraries as special assets in your Flutter project, then Using a technique called Foreign Function Interface or FFI, your Flutter code can actually call functions from those libraries. Next, Flutter 3.19 brings TLHC Text Layer Hybrid Composition mood, which enhances the performance of Flutter apps, which is having complex different layers like Google Maps and Text Input that needs to work together seamlessly. Before TLHC or text layer hybrid composition, the virtual display and hybrid compositions two different methods were used to achieve the same thing in Flutter apps. Next, Flutter text now looks a little more compact and little more native on iOS. According to Apple design guidelines, smaller fonts on iOS should be more spread out in order to be easier to read on mobile, while larger fonts should be more compact to not take up as much space. Before, Flutter was incorrectly using the smaller, more spread out front in all cases. 
But now, by default, Flutter will use the compact font for larger text. And along with all that, there are some improvements on DevTools in Flutter 3.19 that are a new feature added of a screen in DevTools to validate deep link setup on Android and an option in the enhanced tracing menu for tracking platform channel activity. This is useful for apps with plugins and many others. Also, there are some deprecation of platforms such as dropping Flutter support for Windows 7 and 8 and also iOS 11 is also deprecated. And that's it. I highlighted the great contribution done by a vast Flutter community members and the Flutter official team itself. If you want to learn more about new changes and improvements in Flutter 3.19 stable version, check out the Kevin Kishon blog post on Medium, link in the video description. And to dive even more deeper, check out the link of the release notes of Flutter 3.19 in the video description. That's it. In the upcoming videos on Itaquarl, we will take a look on how to build a chatbot using the Google Generative AI package. So until that, stay tuned and goodbye for now. See you in the next video.